definition probability is one of the branches of mathematics that describes the chance outcomes. Now, probability is probably one of the most difficult concepts in statistics because here it requires you to think. But in probability, you need to visualize what is being asked in a problem. Now, probability is not that difficult if you know the technique on how to solve probability. And I'm going to show you some techniques on how um, solving probability, uh, how easy solving probability is. So first, you need to know the uh, technical terms that we're using in uh, probability. The first technical term that we'll use is sample space. Now, sample space is very important in probability. You need to visualize your sample space to be able to answer some questions in probability. Now, what is a sample space? A sample space is basically the list of all the possible outcomes in an experiment. And when we talk about experiment in statistics, we don't talk about a scientific experiment or uh, finding or taking a sample and uh, surveying people, that's not the type of experiment that we're going to be working on in a probability. In an experiment or in a probability, experiments are like rolling a die, flipping a coin, uh, using a standard deck of cards. Those are the experiments in probability that we will use in this chapter. Now I have here some examples of experiments and uh, how to find the sample space on those given experiments. The first example that I have is rolling a die. Now, in this probability uh, concept, um, sample space is very important and you should know or you should be familiar with some of, uh, of the things that we use in or in probability um, problems like a die. If you don't know what a die is and if you are not familiar with a die, you're probably not going to be able to answer probability questions involving a die. Um, uh, but we know, I'm pretty sure most of you know what a die is, it's a, it's a cube and with six dots. And uh, the sample space for a die, as we know, is one through six. So there are uh, dots in a die, hopefully, I'm hoping that you all know what a die is. So the sample space there will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the second experiment that we have is tossing a coin. But in this case, we're not just tossing one coin, we're tossing a coin twice. So uh, here, when we toss a coin twice, the sample space or the list of all possible outcomes or possible combination that we will get when we flip a coin twice will be H, H, T, 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 H, and H, T. For example, if I flip a coin, I look at the coin and it's a T or a tails, and then I flip it again and it's heads, so I have tails and heads, and that's the first combination that I have, so it's right here. Now, listing all of them, I have four possible combination when you flip a coin twice, and that will be your sample space. And the third exper experiment, we have an experiment on a standard deck of cards, drawing uh, a, ca a card from a standard deck of cards. So you should know, you should be familiar with uh, the standard deck of cards, and uh, hopefully all of you know or have seen uh, the standard deck of cards with four suits and with 13 uh, cards all in all. So we have here the sample space for a standard deck of cards, we can start with the king of diamond, king of hearts, king of clover or clubs, or king of spades, and then you go with the queen, queen of diamond, etc., up until you get to the last card. So all in all, in a standard deck of cards, you have 52 cards, and uh, you should be familiar, you should know what uh, a standard deck of cards is to be able to answer probability um, questions involving a standard deck of cards. And we're going to show some examples of that later on. Now, since sample space is really important in probability, um, there are many ways on how to uh, find or list your probability or your sample space. One of uh, the visual representation that we could use in uh, looking at a sample space is a tree diagram. So like what I've said, a tree diagram is basically a visual representation of all your sample space. And here's, uh, I have two examples here of two experiments and I produced the uh, sample space by visualizing it using a tree diagram. So uh, it takes practice to uh, be able to create a tree diagram and uh, it is very helpful in most probability questions when we're going to go deeper into probability. So here's my first experiment, tossing a coin twice. When I mentioned it on, the, on my first example on the first board, 
some of you probably is not visualizing why I have four possible outcomes and how I wrote T, T, H, H, T, H, and H, T in my sample space for flipping a coin twice. Here's a visual representation of that sample space. So I have my coin and I have two possible outcomes. So my first toss, I have tails and heads. So that, this is my first toss, or the represent, representation of my first toss. And on my second toss, for the first toss, I also have another possibility of getting tails and he heads. That's why I branch it out like so. And for H, I also have another possible outcomes for uh, tossing it once. So I have here my first toss and my second toss. So my probability or my sample space here to visually organize your sample space, the first possible combination will be T and T. Second is TH, HT, and HH. So in this case, I am listing down all the possible outcomes visually, and I'm not going to miss out on one sample space or one of the elements in the sample space. So if you miss one of them, you're not going to be able to get the correct answer in a probability questions involving uh, tossing a coin twice. And that's why you need to be careful. That's why a tree diagram will be very helpful in identifying all the elements in your sample space. Now in my second experiment, my second experiment is rolling a die and then tossing a coin. So uh, you have a die and you have a coin and you know that a die has six possible outcomes and a coin has two possible outcomes, so you need to take that in consideration. So my first event is rolling a die. And when I roll a die, I have six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each of the numbers here, um, I have a possible outcome for tossing a coin, and that's tails and heads. So I ordered it right here and organize it in my tree diagrams. So here, you will notice that I'll be able to list down all the possible combination that I could have when I roll a die and I flip a coin. And here are the possible outcomes. A one and a tails, a one and a heads, two and the tails, and so on. And I have all 12 of them, and I did not miss any of the 12 elements in the sample space using my tree diagram. So once again, it is very important that you visualize your tree diagram or visualize your sample space in answering problems involving probability. So let's answer some probability questions. Um, the probability no notation that you need to uh, be familiar with is the, this notation, P of A. So A right here is the name of your event. So it could be A, B, C event B or how many possible events are there or the possible events that's going to be um, included in an experiment. So here are my examples. So the classical probability, by definition, it refers when we know our sample space in calculating the probability of certain event, where in event A is your numerator and your denominator will be your sample space. So that is your classical probability notation. So uh, all the possible outcomes in event A all over the sample space. So here's my example. I have a die, and I need to find the probability of getting an odd number when I roll a die. So in this case, using classical probability, I need to first list down all my possible outcome for my sample space, because that will be my denominator. And for my numerator, I need to list down all the possible outcomes for this particular event. And this event is getting an odd number. And we know that when we roll a die, there are three possible uh, numbers that, are, that will be odd. It will be 1, 3, 5. So we have three um, possible outcomes for event A, and we have six possible outcomes for the sample space. So using the classical probability, P of A is 3 over 6 or 1 half. So therefore, the probability of g getting an odd number when you uh, roll a die is 1 half or 50%. And this is an example of classical probability. And then on my example number two, let's find the probability of getting two tails uh, when you flip a coin twice. So my event A is flipping a coin or getting two tails, or that's my combination, and there's only one possible outcome for that event, which is only TT, so it's one. And for our sample space, we have four possible outcomes, and I've mentioned it already. So we have four for our sample space, Using classical probability, 1 over 4 will be our probability for event A. So therefore, you have 25% chance of getting two tails when you flip a coin twice. And this is how you use classical probability in statistics.